uh, lexicographical ordering, so the ordering that you would get in a dictionary, for instance. Um, the, uh, the compare operation in the string class also allows you to do comparisons of strings, and, and the way that you interpret uh, the value that you get back from the compare operator or the compare operation uh, is shown here on the right. If you get a negative number back from compare, then the string is lexicographically less than the input. If you get zero, then the strings are equivalent. And if you get a positive number, then the string is lexicographically greater than the input. And there are a number of things that you can do with the compare operator to sort of compare um, compare the uh, substrings and a number of other things. Uh, I've given the um, I've given the um, uh, the signatures here, uh, but uh, you know they actually uh, probably looking at uh, some documentation on them. You can actually Google them to find out what they actually are. But the uh, uh, I believe that the ranges of the integers basically give you the the substrings that you can do the comparisons upon. There's also um, substring methods. The substring methods can be used to get a substring from a string. Uh, you can also do some swapping of some strings and some substrings. So the swap method will swap uh, the contents of two strings uh, with each other. So the signature for um, swap is uh, you pass this, you pa so you have a string and you use the swap method, you pass in another string, and then the, the, the string that you've uh, um, operated this thing on, will be re the contents of that will be replaced by the input. There are also some methods for doing uh, string characteristics or getting the characteristics of strings. The, um, the capacity operation, uh, the capacity method will give you the size that the string can op occupy without allocating more memory. Max size tells you what the maximum size of the string can be, and that's, so that's going to be um, the same value on the same machine. So that's never, that should never change unless you move to a different machine where perhaps you have more space. The size operation tells you the size of the current string, and, say, and that's the same thing as doing the length. And then the empty operation tells you whether or not the string is empty. Uh, I've listed it here as, as integer, but it's actually a Boolean. Uh, telling you whether or not the, the string is empty. There are search operations that allow you to search a string for the occurrence of some other string. So it gives you, so the find and the R find give you the subscripts of where, uh, where you can find certain substrings. The first one, the find operation, tells you the first occurrence of a substring. Uh, the R find gives you the last occurrence of a substring. You also find first of, which gives you the first the, the subscript of the first occurrence of any character in a string, and then there's a find last of, which gives you the subscript of the last occurrence of any character in a string as. Uh, so, for instance, that uh, find first of, it, if you have a string, it'll look for a string s, it'll look for any of the characters in string s uh, and tell you uh, where the first occurrence of that is in any string. And then the last uh, method here is find first not of. Uh, same idea if you have a string. Any of the characters that's in there, uh, you'll get the subscript of the first occurrence of any character not in string s. There are replacement operations uh, that allow you to do things like erase the contents of a string starting in a certain place. You can replace certain substrings uh, within the string start by Starting at a, a starting oper or starting location and then replacing a certain number of characters. Uh, you can also do a replace uh, where you replace like the entire contents and and entire substrings of uh, some input string, uh, as is shown here as at the as the last bullet in the slide. <clears throat> I will run through some examples of these in one of the upcoming episodes. So. Uh, don't worry too much about all these, but you know, do come back to this uh, uh, this podcast to uh, to look at um, what some of the the possible operations are. There's also an insertion capability with uh, the string class, uh, so you can insert a string at a certain position. This is sort of like doing some of the 
the substring operations. You can also do a insertion of a string uh, in a certain range, uh, starting at a certain index. Finally, the string class uh, in the string library has the ability to do stream processing, uh, which allows you to do things that would be similar to doing um, outputs with C out. In this case, though, you can create an O string stream, and you can do streaming of various um, objects. They don't actually have to be just strings, uh, as long as the uh, the type in question is supported by or implements uh, the uh, the shift operation. Um, then you can do basically uh, these uh, these streams of characters, streams of strings and integers and various other objects um, to some output string or at least to some, some output stream uh, that can then be printed by using something like CL. So um, anyway, so the, str the string class, the string library um, is actually quite powerful. It's actually very similar to the string class in, in Java. Um, and uh, it does make uh, it a lot easier to do string manipulation than if we were just using care stars. So anyway, that's the conclusion of this episode.